Ha ha ha. Navigating rowing clubs and coaches. Okay. The coaches only know what they learned in the past. And so who the coach was of the club coach matters immensely. Now, if the club coach has a U.S. rowing certification, that's a plus because they do learn something uh, through U.S. rowing, and that's important. But when it comes to these very details that are actually fundamentals, unless you're exposed to it seriously exposed to it like I was or like some others were where those details actually made it possible to win the Olympics be the world champion in indoor rowing on the concept of rowing machine have the um, the fastest I've it written down here you can't read it have the fastest last 500 meter sprint ever recorded at the world championship or an Olympics. I rode one minute, 36 seconds and 56 hundredths in order to win the gold medal at the Atlanta Olympics. That hasn't been broken yet. And the fact that it still hasn't been broken yet means that the coaching, the coaching was on point. And that was probably psychotic enough to go that hard. But yeah, there's more than one thing that makes, that brings such a result. So the coaches know what the coaches know, and there's a lot we don't, we don't know, right? Me included, I still learn, but I have had the most amazing coaches. So the ratio of coach to rower is brutal. So usually there's one coach for probably two boats, Sometimes the main coach will only take out the top boat. So it's the nine to one ratio. But a lot of the second and third aides, they usually go out together with the second coach. And then immediately that becomes an 18 to one ratio. So the first one is a nine to one ratio. The, other, the, this, the following one is an, is an 18 to one ratio. Okay, 18 because we include the coxswains. So the amount of actionable coaching feedback that you can get in one workout becomes very, very small. When winter comes and people are off the water, it's common to not get enough feedback technically on the ergometer. Why? Because the link between the ergometer and, and the boat is not obvious because of, because of coaching, how the coaches were coached. Remember, I was coached on the erg to know how to row the boat. And we linked the two together. In winter, there's usually a, a short, it's, there aren't enough ergs for women's teams and men's team. So the amount of erging that's done in winter may, may seem a lot simply because in springtime they don't erg that much, but then in winter you do erg. But because there's, a, there's not enough ergs around, there's a bunch of training that's done that is not directly promoting the rowing muscles. Now, the argument can be made that while well, we do cross training and cross training is great, but to improve, to improve the rowing stroke, it is important that you end up driving the proper stroke over and over and over and over in the right way and not just working out hard, which that's the other problem is that Every workout on the erg is usually to the max of the, of the possible effort. And that's an issue. That is something that I address um, as I tandem coach. So when someone 
when I when I when I help high school rowers, I make sure that I offset the hard stuff so they can recover faster in an active way instead of just being dead at home. I help them figure out how to handle the stresses of not knowing what the next workout is going to be because that's another thing. A lot of the club rowers are left guessing what tomorrow brings. And oftentimes the ERGs, ERG tests are surprise ERGs. Um, we might do a 2K in the next couple of weeks. But what day that is, no one has an idea. So it's really difficult for parents and junior rowers to kind of get mentally ready for it. And I help figure this out, you know. Um, parents can augment the coach's effort with personalized support. Okay, yes. Ask the coach if there's something you can do to help them do a better job coaching, but don't say it that way. How can we help you? make it better for you for coaching here's the reason why that's important because the coaches are spread thin their patience level is less so having supportive parents may make the coach more at ease and if they're more at ease they can actually coach better so that's something to do now don't be surprised if coaches don't like communicating with parents because the parents oftentimes have questions that require <laughs> that require a um, a clear answer or a clear explanation as to why something is happening and a lot of the times club coaches well they they create but they cannot necessarily back up in a way that will appease parents who say, why is my child not in the first boat? Why is my child not improving on the erg? And why aren't you helping my child more? It's just an example. And so they get very defensive. And it's not unusual to have zero communication between parents and coaches and this is where I come this is where I help out not that the club coaches know that parents hire me but I kind of explain through the information that we get through your junior rower what the situation may look like at the club and by talking to me about it you get a better picture and I I help bring more peace to a situation that might be at first unclear. So I clarify it. And once it's clearer, then you can kind of create um, a step-by-step -step plan to make the situation, the local situation better. Ah, uh, yes. How to ask the right questions without being confrontational. I help that. I know how sensitive the situation can get with coaches. And so, <laughs> it's like a joke, but the Swiss are good diplomats. And remember, I was born in Switzerland. There is a di very diplomatic way to um, help and find out and make the situation better for both sides. So, I do enjoy this part of the coaching that I do, is to stroke the ego and get something out of it. All right. it sounds very, it sounds like a poker game. But anyways, all right. Um, building collaborative relationship with the club, I did that. Dedicated coach for specific area. Erg technique can complement club coach. Oh, yeah. So, again, the, the bridge between erging and rowing on the water. When winter comes 
and the room is really sweaty and they're full of people and it's really noisy. By default, the coaches will say, this is the workout, let's go for it. And it's almost as if the, the numbers on the performance monitors sidetracks looking out for technique. It's all about the numbers. And maybe, maybe look, if you're a club coach and you're listening to me and you say, no, 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 this is not what I do. Great, you may not be doing this. But very quickly, you know how quickly people just start crunching numbers and comparing numbers. And there's not necessarily a lot of time spent looking at the stroke on the erg to find out why a certain person is better than the other. Sometimes it's a lightweight that's better than the heavyweight. Why? Well, the heavyweight is having too much weight. He's just died. Some people will know, oh yeah, this is why. They're using their muscles at the wrong time, etc. But winter is an amazing opportunity to get better technically. I mean, so is spring and, and fall. All right. Uh, yeah. So communication can be hard at the club. Try and support your coach. Do hire someone like me to help your child be as good as it can be on the erg. So the technique is better, the clearer, clearer mindset, they learn how to visualize, but also understanding training intensity at home that can help them improve faster at the club. And what I do goes in tandem. All right, next slide.